Hello, I am Jung Wook, a computer science PhD student at Georgia Tech. Today, I'll be talking about uncovering opportunities for energy harvesting technologies. In 1991, Mark Weiser envisioned the computer for 21st centuries, called ubiquitous computing. And he anticipated that in the world of ubiquitous computing, the most profound technologies are those that disappear and they weave themselves into the fabric of everyday life until they are indistinguishable from it. Since then, many of his contemporaries have realized three core technologies that Weiser emphasized, chip and low power computing, software for ubiquitous applications, and wireless network that are ties all the devices together. However, 21st century has arrived and we are not yet living in the world that Weiser envisioned. Gregory Avod argued for computational materials as a field that needs to be further studied to complete the Weiser's visions. And specifically, he insisted on three elements, scale, form factor, and power. My doctoral thesis will deal with the power. So let me talk a little bit about what the computational materials are. ABAL defined computational materials as a manufacturable materials that can acquire the energy through harvesting or wireless power transfer to do what the today's computational device can do. So here, the critical problems to realize the vision of ubiquitous computing is acquiring the energy through either harvesting or wireless power transfers. In my doctoral thesis, I wanted to focus on the current challenges and possible solutions for energy harvesting technologies. To explore these research challenges, I have looked into a particular and very interesting application domain, which is automobile. So why do you need to focus on automobiles? The modern car contain more than 100 sensors. Many of current sensors can be replaced with the computational materials. For example, the current tire pressure sensors can be changed with the pressure-sensitive triboelectric nanogenerators. Or the current humidity or fluid level sensors can also be replaced with a self-powered nanogenerator. So there's a lot of electrical components that require the energy in automobiles. But at the same time, automobiles can also produce heat, wind, and vibration energy while driving. Here you can add solar energy as well as an ambient energy source. So we have a lot of electrical elements that require the energy, and we have various energy sources generated while driving. But we did not pay attention to how we can utilize these available energy resources to fill this gap. The main focus of energy harvesting in automobiles was recharging their main batteries. So we conduct a holistic evaluation of possible energy harvesting technology in and around on automobiles. For wind energy, we developed a small scale wind turbine and we attached an anemometer with our wind turbine to four different places, front and rear bumpers, side doors and the roof. We also test off the shelf thermoelectric energy generators with the temperature sensors to examine how much heat energy is available. For solar energy, we attach the solar cells with the light sensors to four different locations and measure solar energy in the day and night time. Lastly, we develop an inch scale vibration energy harvesters and attach it to our test car with the vibration sensors. So summing up, we have a four energy harvesters and four energy monitors. So we can convert each energy source to electrical power while measuring how much energy is available at the different positions. So we theoretically estimate the amount of electrical power that can harvest it from each source, and then compare it with the results in the practical measurement. The details of these results will be published soon. To show how you can design automobiles with this type of energy harvesting technologies, we demonstrate a thermoelectric energy-based parking assistant called RearSense. And here is the quick and simple installation process.
The sensor harvested waste heat energy from exhaust pipe and stored it while driving. And when you change the gear to levers, then this sensor system activates three laser-based proximity sensors and transmit the distance data over Bluetooth low energy so the driver can see what objects behind the car. As you can see in this demo video, energy harvesting in automobile has a lot of potentials. We can easily distribute sensing and computing capability while maintaining low complexity in installations. In addition to that, these approaches can also guarantee high efficient maintenance. So here are the two questions we can answer with our energy harvesting approaches. Can we unbundle intelligent sensors from expensive option packages on a new vehicle? Or can we retrofit new sensors onto old car? So ultimately, we can develop ubiquitous safety technologies. So how to extend this approach is? We can think about domains not only automobiles, but also a lot of different mobility, such as electric scooters or e-bike. To fully utilize the current or noble energy harvesting technologies for computational materials, we need the proper tools. It is because noble energy harvesting will require the stiff learning curve in many disciplines, such as material science, mechanical and electrical engineering, computer science, and manufacturing. In our discussions, I'd like to propose an agenda about how you can design an energy harvesting toolkit for computational materials and each research value as well. Thank you for your attention.